Censorship. Warning. Censorship. We have a brand new access to information document package to show you about the arrest and then subsequent incarceration of Pastor Tim Stevens. Now, the bad news, however, is that all I can show you is 18 pages of pretty much nothing. And I'll get to that in a second. Now, for those of you who may not already know, Pastor Tim Stevens has been absolutely plagued by public health authorities and police harassing his Fairview Baptist Church in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, when the church did not turn away congregants to meet the government's ever-changing and seemingly arbitrary capacity limits and COVID restrictions on places of worship. Police repeatedly entered the church during church services. Police then arrested Tim in front of his family, not once, but twice. The first time taking place after Sunday services, and then there was this time in front of Tim's children. He was held in the Calgary remand jail for weeks after that arrest. Rebel journalists Kean Simone and Adam Sos were on hand that day to capture the absolutely gut-wrenching scene. I mean, just look at this. Okay, yeah. and then you got that gathering on June the 6th. Yeah. Okay, so that's what you're under arrest for. <laughs> Now, Pastor Tim is being represented by the very great lawyers from the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, and our Rebel News team of journalists has been there at Fairview Baptist almost from the beginning, including when Tim was arrested and then incarcerated for weeks as a prisoner of conscience, unable to comply with bail conditions that he said violated his religion. Now, naturally, I wanted to know who was making the decisions to torment the Fairview Baptist congregation, and also leave the innocent Stevens children with the lifelong trauma of seeing their pastor father taken away in handcuffs for the crime of simply reopening his church during COVID. Now, I've asked these sorts of questions before of the government regarding other persecuted pastors. Persecuted is my word, not the pastor's word. For example, I asked the government about the treatment of Pastor Art Poloski, sentenced just last week to time served, three days, tens of thousands of dollars in fines, and a compelled speech ruling that makes Pastor Art give the government talking points any time Art expresses a political view, including from the pulpit, about lockdowns and vaccines. Art's crime? Refusing to allow inspectors to invade church services. The government is taking an 11-month delay to provide documents to me after taking a $1,300 fee to get access. Then there's Pastor James Coates of Grace Life Church. He spent five weeks in jail, and his congregation was driven underground when the church building was seized after the church itself refused to obey the government's restrictions over what they said God called them to do. When I asked the government about documents relating to that church, the Alberta government handed us a 10-month delay only after we handed them over $1,900 to identify and I suppose ultimately redact the pages they were required to give me. While with my investigation into the treatment of Pastor Tim, I didn't get a huge bill or an enormous delay. I got something equally as frustrating, but also equally as motivating, motivating to keep me curious. I did get 18 pages emailed to me, but those pages are all redacted. There is quite literally nothing to see here. The government redacted everything and then gave those documents to me in some sick joke. Well, this isn't going to stop me. We are appealing the redactions and we will appeal and appeal until we get these documents so that we can show you what was being said 
and what was being planned about Pastor Tim. But these sorts of constant ongoing appeals are expensive. And we have a researcher who works for us who files these appeals for us. He also deals with some of the paperwork aspect of this. And then he helps us go through the volumes of documents when we finally do get them. Now, if you'd like to fund our ongoing access to information investigation into the Alberta government's treatment of these pastors, please donate today at rebelinvestigates.com. And thank you to those of you who already have. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunreed. To help fund our ongoing access to information investigations into all levels of government, including the Alberta government's treatment of pastors during the time of COVID, please donate today at rebelinvestigates.com. What is done in the dark should see the light of day. Again, that special website is rebelinvestigates.com.